Hi, my name is Simon and I will talk to you about the integration of the FDA Data Integrity Guideline in Bruco's IR spectroscopic software Opus. Data integrity is definitely a hot topic right now. The FDA guideline describes and highlights the requirements for working with good practices. It is crucial for pharmaceutical industries and it is more and more applied in other fields than pharma as well. So what exactly is data integrity? Companies that want to sell their pharmaceutical products must explicitly follow these rules or otherwise their products will not be approved. This means that the completeness, consistency and accuracy of acquired data has to be ensured at all times. For that reason, Bruker developed the next generation of compliant spectroscopy software to address the FDA guideline as well as good practices requirements, for example 21 CFR Part 11. Besides many other features, most importantly, only one installation of Opus is allowed on the PC at any time. Spectra are permanently and safely recorded into a protected data pool and our audit trail lets you manage your reviewed and recorded data directly from Opus. In the next few minutes, we want to explain what Opus does to ensure compliance, helps to improve your audits and manage your data securely and with integrity. We will explain how each key user of our spectroscopic system will benefit from Opus and where his focus lies when it comes to day-to-day -to -day routine lab business. In the first chapter, we will address the system and software administrator. If you'd like, you can skip to the other chapters regarding operator, lab manager or auditor first, but we recommend watching the webinar in the presented order. The Opus administrator should be the only Opus user that possesses admin rights to the Windows PC as well. As administrator, you can install software, access user settings, and set up equipment qualification settings. However, you cannot measure and evaluate data and use create or save methods. The administrator is mainly responsible for setting up your measurement device and workstation, installing Opus, and prepare the user management. In the second chapter, we focus on the operator of the device. The operator mainly manages day-to-day -day business. He should therefore not have any administrative rights to the Windows PC and he can only execute those tasks in Opus that were assigned to him. The lab manager or administrator create the appropriate workspace for the operators. They can measure and evaluate data, load and save spectra. They can also set up experiments and review or release new methods and spectra if they were granted these rights by the admin account. They cannot, however, access user management, create a workspace or set up the requirements for an equipment qualification. In the third chapter, we go into details about the lab manager. Again, it should be noted that neither the operator nor the lab manager should possess administrative rights to Windows. The lab manager has the most extensive user rights in Opus. Besides accessing user and signature management, the lab manager can control almost any Opus feature. Lastly, we implemented some very nice features into Opus to make reviewing extremely convenient. Especially during an audit, our smart archiving and specialized audit trails will improve your experience with data integrity. So at this point, we start up the Opus installer and install Opus in data integrity mode. We already started the process. During the installation you will have to make a few adjustments to the routine install. We will skip the unnecessary parts and continue directly to the important settings. To work in data integrity mode, you have to check 21 CFR part 11 mode. This will install all necessary functions and will set up windows accordingly. Be advised that this cannot be changed later and has to be specified upon installation. If you want to work with databases as well, you also have to select it upon installation. Later implementation of databases will not be possible. Click next and finally confirm installation. We have already started Opus and now we log in with a standard password, capital O-P-U-S. You are immediately informed that your password is expired and you need to change it. The new password, however, has to follow some rules that can be adjusted later. For now, it needs to be at least 8 characters in length, needs capital as well as lowercase letters, numbers and special characters. The colors are indicating the status of your password. If no color is shown, your password is accepted and you can click Change Password. Now you need to log in again with your new credentials. The default workspace shows only a reduced amount of features. Since as admin your only task is to set up the device and the user settings, we go straight to the user and signature management. Here you can browse through the predefined users, admin, 
lab manager and operator. You can see that the operator is only assigned one workspace. In this window you can change the user group of the user. You can force the user to change the password and you can add signatures or workspaces to a designated user. If needed, the admin can also lock out a user to deny access to the whole system. Right now, we add a new workspace to the operator. To assign signatures to a user, a full name must be entered. In our case, we use a placeholder. To add a signature, you must first accept the changes we did to the profile. In this case, we want our operator to be the first reviewer of change data or methods. So, we assign him a signature for review. In the global options of the user management, you can define the password and login preferences. You can adjust the minimum length of the user ID, maximum login attempts before user is locked out, duration of lockout, password expiration settings and password complexity. After you have adjusted the password complexity, the user will be prompted to change the password at the next login. Now we take a look at the other user groups. The lab manager naturally has access to all workspaces. To assign a signature, we once more have to enter a full name. As lab manager, the user should be able to review, release and lock. For that, we enter three signatures and click OK. Although one user may have two or more signatures, the 4i principle cannot be bypassed and two users are always required to release methods or experiments. Let's switch to the admin user group and force him to change password. We store the settings and log out. After we type in our old password, we have to change it again. The system will not accept the old password as we have specified in the global settings. We add another special character and are good to go. So, now I want to show you what the Opus installation has done to protect all your spectral data. For that, we go to the Windows Explorer and navigate to the respective Opus folder. To save time, I use a shortcut, but the protected pool can be found under C, Users, Public, Public Documents, Broker. You can see the small symbol at the lower left of the folder icon. This indicates that only users with administrative rights to Windows may change or delete files from within this folder or the folder itself. Normal users like operator or lab manager are not able to change or delete data. Let's try to delete a file from the workspace. As you can see, Windows prompts me to continue as administrator. Since I do not possess the necessary rights, I cannot proceed and I press cancel. This of course also applies to any other files stored within the protected data pool. Ok, these were the essentials when it comes to the admin users of Opus and Windows. We will now continue with the lab manager. The password of the lab manager was already changed so we can directly log into Opus. We select the Alpha Advanced workspace since we want to configure it for the operator. The lab manager most likely is a supervisor that manages and controls the device. Since he has to set up workspaces for the operators, we will try by adding the necessary icons to the workspace. In our case, the operator will be allowed to measure spectra as well as set up experiments, but it is possible to perfectly tailor the workspace to your needs and be more restrictive. Also, we want the operator to check the global audit trail, review data, methods and experiments. The operator will also have to run the automated operation and performance qualification, so the lab manager has to set it up for him. We already connected a device and go straight to the OVP test setup. We can adjust test intervals or even add new protocols, for example the European Pharmacopoeia PQ test. The lab manager also has the possibility to import old data and experiments from a former Opus installation to the data integrity mode and protected pool. For this, we select the Import to protect the data pool function. Navigate to the stored files and select them as source. Then navigate to the protected data pool as destination. As before, it is C, Users, Public, Public Documents, Broker and select the Experiments folder. Then we just have to click Import. Now we can load the experiment, but we are not able to measure with the freshly imported XPM file. When we try to take a background measurement, Opus instantly informs us that the experiment is not signed and can therefore not be used. We will cover the signing process in the next chapter. Ok, that's it for the lab manager.
any other function can be also covered by the operator as long as he has been granted the respective rights. As mentioned before, the operator is restricted to the workspaces and functions he was assigned by the lab manager. Therefore, only two different workspaces can be selected. As we have prepared the alpha advanced, we log in with that. When we go to the validation tab of Opus, we can clearly see that the setup OVP function is grayed out and the operator is only allowed to run the predefined qualification tests. This also applies to the buttons of the workspace. In this case, the clone original file button is also grayed out and not available for the operator. The main task for the operator will be the measurement and handling of spectra. So let's just do that. As we measure a spectra, be ensured that all data is automatically stored and protected from infringement. Ok, the measurement is done. If you try to save the original file outside the protected pool, an error message will pop up and remind you that a path within the protected pool should be specified. So let's try it again, but this time with the right data path for the protected pool. No error message is shown and we are informed that the spectra have been successfully saved to the designated path. Now we will change the experiment. Changed experiments should never be used unreviewed and unsigned. After we changed some of the measurement parameters, we save the experiment and try to load it. As soon as we hit measure, we are once more informed that this experiment is unsigned and can therefore not be used. To sign it, we have to exit the measurement window and click Sign method. There, you now have to select the method type and click Load method. Now you can find a specialized audit trail. As you can see, this method was changed multiple times. Now we want to add a new signature, so we click on the Add Signature button. As the operator has created the file, he will act as a first reviewer to the method. After the credentials have been put in, we click OK, select the reason for signing and continue. Since every method or experiment has to be signed by two unique user IDs, we need another signature. The operator can now call the lab manager to assist him and review and release the changed experiment. The lab manager approves of the operator's changes and signs it as well, this time releasing the method. Now the operator is able to use the changed, released and signed file. We select the new method, try to measure a background and this time no error message is shown. An even more detailed method audit trail is offered when you go to the tab History displayed in the method signing window. Here you can get very detailed information on why, by whom and when the method was edited. You are also told what parameters of the experiment were changed in the process. To sign spectra, the operator has to click on the Sign Spectra button. He will be prompted to type in his credentials and after clicking OK, he can choose his signature. Other users can sign spectra from this menu as well and don't have to log in separately. After we signed this spectra, we can take a look at another specialized audit trail, the spectra history. Left you can see the loaded spectra and the corresponding data blocks. Select the history block and double click. A window will open where you can see all changes that were done to the spectrum. In this case, we only signed the spectrum and no further evaluation was done. Ok, that's it for the operator. We will now continue to the auditor. At the end of every data integrity effort stands the auditor. He will have to go through all your data and maybe wants to know things as detailed as possible. We have already showed you the method and spectra audit trail and although they are already quite powerful, they are surpassed by Bruker's global audit trail. To get to this smart feature, click the global audit trail button on the workspace. Here you can find every information you are looking for, from password expirations to logins to measurements. Any change or work will be added to the protocol. The smart archiving functions help to look through large amounts of data. You can, for example, narrow the time frame to an exact date or time span. Additionally, you can search each column for a special keyword to look for a specific user or event. You can add multiple keyword searches to further narrow down search results. In the Changed Value tab, you can access detailed information on the event. Since we have not selected a file, we do not see any changed values. We select this spectra event and take a look at the changed values. We can see which file was modified and how. It is also possible to export your audit trail data in character separated values. 
this CSV file can then be opened in Excel or any other data processing software. Another great feature of Opus Data Integrity Mode is the quick navigating when it comes to evaluation of the Global Audit Trail. Just click on the object snapshot entry within the Global Audit Trail window. The corresponding full data file history is instantly opened in Opus. You can add multiple entries at once and take a look after closing the Global Audit Trail window. As we discussed before, the data file history is a complete track of what happened to the corresponding file. In this case, no changes beside an atmospheric correction were done. So let's look at what Opus offers you when it comes to data integrity. Data is always safely stored and cannot be lost. It offers extensive user and signature management and the global audit trail features smart archiving. Summarized, it's efficient, comprehensive and smart. Thanks for watching and if you have further questions visit our website or follow us on our social media channels.